everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel. Isn't this cute? This is a poncho and it's made out of Joanne Fabrics and Crafts Platitudes fabric. Now I purchased my Platitudes fabric on sale. So make sure you look for those coupons so you can get fabric at a big discount. Also make sure you sign up for the Joanne coupon app because that's where I got extra bargains with mine. So ponchos, it has a small seam on the side, large armholes. You can put pockets on it if you like. And up here at the top, I have a frog closure, which is really easy to put on. And it just sets off this poncho really, really well. Now this poncho and other poncho tutorials, I will have listed below your YouTube screen in the description section. Also, all these goodies behind me that you see on the wall, those links will also be down there. Okay, let's get started. The Platitudes fabric is about 45 inches wide. So that width of the fabric is gonna go all the way across both sides. I'm five foot one and that Platitudes fabric comes a little bit above my wrist when my arms are spread out. So it may come up a little bit more on you if you're much taller or wider than I am. Now you wanna determine the length that it's going to be. This will help you to calculate how much fabric you need to buy. So place a tape measure at the top center of your shoulder and let it drop all the way down and look to see where you would like your poncho hem to be. Then write that number down. Now remember, your length may be different than mine. So I'm just using my length for the example to demonstrate how to calculate the amount of fabric you want to buy. So I've measured all the way down. My length is 28 inches from shoulder down my, the front of my body. And I'm going to multiply that times two because I need enough fabric for the front and back of my body. That comes out to 56 inches. I'm going to add two more inches on for a small seam allowance and a small hem. I'm also gonna put pockets on this poncho. That is an option, you don't need to put them on. So if you want the pockets, you need to add another six and a half inches, and your pockets will wind up being six and a half by eight and a half inches. So you're gonna add all these numbers up. 56 inches for the total length, plus two inches for the seam, and then six and a half inches for the pockets. That comes out to 64.5 inches. It's just a little under two yards. That's for me, but for some of you, it might be more. When you purchase this, the fabric, it is folded in half with your selvage edges together. Now you will notice that the platitude fabric on the selvage edges has a little bit of fringe on it. We're not going to cut that off for this poncho. You're gonna leave it on because we're gonna use it as a decorative edge throughout the poncho. So you wanna make sure that your fabric is folded evenly down here at the selvage edge. You also wanna make sure this is straight. So just cut any jagged edges off. Then for this, you're gonna start cutting the pieces for the front and back. So you're gonna move over whatever your length is plus one inch and then cut. Then repeat, move over whatever your length is plus one inches and cut. Then if you're gonna do pockets, you need to go over six and a half inches and cut. Then take this strip, turn it so it goes out like this don't cut the selvage edges off. Go in eight and a half inches and cut. Now take either one of these pieces and you're gonna put a straight pin here on the fold and over here on the fold. Then take this piece and lay it flat out on your table. So here are your selvage edges. You have a pin here and a pin there. Hopefully it's straight. Then you're going to cut 
right on that. If you're using a rotary cutter and quilting ruler, then just lay that ruler matching pin to pin and do your cut. After you've cut all of your fabric pieces, then you want to either surge the edge with a serger machine or use an overcast stitch from your sewing machine. So here is a surged edge. Here is an overcast edge seam with your sewing machine. Or if you have an older machine, this is a zigzag stitch. So you want to bind the edge, the raw edges of your fabric. If you're using the zigzag stitch, widen your stitch to 7.0 and shorten the length up a little bit so the stitches are closer together. So on your pieces for the front, the pieces you just cut, you're going to stitch only on the raw edges of both pieces. The piece for the back, just the raw edges at the top and the bottom. All of your fringe stays on all of your pieces. Take the piece of fabric that is for the back. It's one long strip of fabric and you want to lay it down with salvage, ed salvage edges on your right and left side. And you have your raw edges up here and down here. Then take your pieces for the front and match up here at the top. And you want, if you're using platitudes, you want to match the stripes the plaid sections in your fabric because it's going to look a lot more professional that way. And just smooth it all out and pin the edges together up here at the top. Now here is the very center front. Now you want to determine just how wide you want your neck opening and you're all going to be different. So you want to measure from each side of the neck and mine came out to about nine inches. So what I did from the center, I went out four and a half inches this way and four and a half inches this way. So whatever your measurement is, divide it in half and go out from center that amount. Now on each side, I put two pins. That's to tell me don't stitch in here. So then to stitch the top edge, you're going to go all the way out to the sides where the fringe is and stitch all the way across to the two pins using a half inch wide seam. After stitching your top uh, shoulder seam area, then you want to press your seam and you want to press it open. Now here at the neck area, I have folded the back section over a half inch and then up at the front here, also a half inch. Then you want to stitch all of this down. So you're going to go from your seam here. Here's the seam. You're going to go out a quarter of an inch away from that seam and stitch it down all the way across and across the neckline area out to the other end and the same over here quarter of an inch out all the way across. So now after stitching across the top edge, we're now done with that portion. We're going to work on the center front and down at the bottom. So fold your edges over and you're going to do this at your ironing board. So fold them over about a quarter of an inch and press. Then when you get to the bottom, let me pull this up a little bit, then you're going to fold the bottom edge a quarter of an inch all the way across and press that. You're going to do it on both sides. You're also going to press the back section at the very bottom edge a quarter of an inch. And then you're going to stitch just inside here about through the middle of your surged area or near where your overcast stitches are and stitch all the way around all those folded pressed edges. If you're going to have pockets on there, you want to take the pieces that you cut six and a half by eight and a half and on the three raw edges, not the fringe edge, 
just the three raw edges, you're going to serge them or do an overcast stitch. Once you've done that, then go to the bottom, fold the edge over a quarter of an inch, then go to each side and fold them over a quarter of an inch and you're pressing all three edges. To put the pockets on the poncho, unfold your uh, poncho out to where you just have the front side of it laying down. Your back side is out and away because you're going to pin the pockets on. Now before you stitch them on, I recommend you put the poncho on to see exactly where you want your pockets. Do you want them straight up and down? Like let's say, do you want them straight up and down like this? Or do you want them at an angle? I'm stitching mine on at an angle because I find it's easier to put my hands in it. So mark that area and then place your pockets down. Pin them down on three edges and then stitch close to the edge all the way across and make, stitch, make sure you back stitch a couple of times up at the top. Now you're going to stitch the side seams and so bring your bottom edges together at one corner and again make sure everything is smooth all the way up here. Now you may want to try your poncho on again to see how large you want your armholes. Mine are about 9 inches. Some of you may want them smaller or wider. I just like my arms to be able to go through really easy. And down here at the bottom you have an option of not having a little slit or you can stitch it all the way down. I have a little slit. It's about 5 inches. My armhole again is 9 inches. So I'm going to stitch from here, back stitch, all the way up to the bottom of the armhole and back stitch again. And you would do the same thing on the other side. This is a frog closure. And this, is, this particular one is made by Dritz. And I purchased it from Walmart. Not all Walmart stores carry fabric and craft items. You can probably find it at Joann's. You can always find it on the internet. Now this is just one style. You may want to search for other styles. So you're going to put it up on the front side near the neckline. And they didn't really give a good suggestion on how to stitch this down. They just said stitch it down. My suggestion is, is do kind of a little whip stitch using black thread and just go from underneath on the back side of your fabric, come up, go down over the top, then move over, come up, and I would go around all of this. Now don't stitch this loop down here. This one stays unstitched, this one here, because it has to go over this. Well, here it is. It's all done. I just really love this frog closure up here. It just really sets it off with the black against this dark green fabric. Now here are the pockets, a little bit of fringe there, and then on the sides you have your fringe showing on the sides. This is really easy. If you have experience in sewing, probably take you an hour to make it. Those of you who are just learning, probably take you a couple hours or more. Now, if you're interested in other ponchos, I have many. There will be a playlist listed below your YouTube screen. You just scroll down to the description section, click on show more or the down arrow, and you will see all of these different links appearing, including the poncho list plus other sewing projects. Now don't forget I have sewing tips of the week that come out every week on Wednesday. I also have a couple of times a month cross stitch tips. So make sure you look for those. Now don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the 
best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.